The great AI job replacement is a lie. The story you've been sold about AI creating more jobs than it destroys leaves out a lot. 78 million new jobs. The headline blinks on every screen. Sounds like a lifeline. While you're tweaking your resume to say pretty good at pivot tables, the role you just lost is churning away in a server room that never needs a coffee break. I'm here to be honest. I'm not going to join all of these other AI founders and politicians lying to you. Let's understand together what you can actually actually do to protect your livelihood. Don't ask yourself, will AI take my job? But rather, which parts of my job are on borrowed time? Please leave comments as you go. I want to hear what you're going through and what you think. So the fairy tale is the World Economic Forum, McKinsey, and every press release I see swear AI is a job creator. The WEF forecasted that by 2030, 92 million jobs will be lost to automation while adding 170 million new jobs. Do the subtraction and humanity supposedly pockets 78 million fresh paychecks. Politicians love this line. It lets them quote big shiny numbers without looking eyes with a single senior citizen cashier whose job they just took forever. It's comforting, tidy, and like most junk food, mainly sugar. The core issue with the net new jobs forecast is a profound skill mismatch between displaced labor and emerging role requirements. There's a structural problem here. The workforce being displaced is usually people working as factory workers, cashiers, and even nowadays, white collar jobs like accountants. But the new job postings demand advanced technical knowledge, fluency in programming languages like Python, experience with ML frameworks like PyTorch, and a conceptual grasp of principles like Bayesian uncertainty. I've worked in tech for 10 years and I didn't even know this term. The jobs being eliminated and the jobs being created don't overlap. And an accountant with 20 years experience can't just pivot into becoming an AI auditor without probably years of retraining. It's not about whether they're willing to, it's about practicality. And then there's the geography, which no one talks about. AI-driven job creation is in places like San Francisco, Seattle, Shenzhen, Dubai, and Berlin, but job losses are happening everywhere. Ohio, rural France, Florida, Scotland, and relocating isn't simple. You're asking people to uproot their lives, abandon communities, and somehow afford skyrocketing housing costs in the very cities driving this transformation. So for most, it's just not an option. Now I'm very data-driven and I know you're sitting there thinking, why should I trust this random woman on the internet? Fair. I recently spoke with a gentleman named Alvin Graylin. He's a guest lecturer at MIT. He works at Stanford's Digital Economy Lab. And I wanted to know about Stanford's research on AI's impact on the job market. The findings were scary and very clear. According to Stanford, employment data shows a clear divergence in loss of jobs starting around 2022, the same period when OpenAI's APIs became available to businesses. Entry-level tech roles were hit first, and for the first time in 40 years, unemployment among new graduates rose above the national average. But it doesn't stop there. Mid-level professionals are now getting pushed out too, faster than universities and and training programs can adapt. We're producing graduates for jobs that no longer exist. And just when you think you understand the problem, here's the twist. OpenAI isn't just automating jobs, it's positioning itself to control the replacement economy too. Now OpenAI is reportedly building its own job matching platform, a direct competitor to LinkedIn, designed to funnel displaced workers into the very AI-driven labor markets it's helped create. So they delete your job, then they sell you a new one. It's not inherently evil, but it's trying to control who gets hired in the future it's creating, and it's a power shift we've never seen before. What do you guys think about that? Now, companies love to say AI will augment, not replace human workers. I'm guilty of saying it too, because it sounds nice and I hope for that. But in reality, augmentation usually means one person managing the output of several AI systems, doing the work that used to keep five people employed. It's just math. But what's so weird about that is MIT found that fewer than one in 10 corporate AI pilots actually make money. McKinsey found something even wilder. Eight out of 10 companies running generative AI pilots saw no measurable benefit 
at all. So jobs are being consolidated, but the tools replacing them aren't even living up to their promises yet. That means the work of multiple people is falling onto the shoulders of less employees. In reality, it's just code for workforce restructuring. And that's what makes the bigger conversation unavoidable. What happens when fewer people are doing more work and the jobs simply cannot be replenished? One solution that keeps coming up is universal basic income, UBI, or as Elon Musk likes to call it, universal high income. And despite what people think, it's not about paying people to sit around and do nothing. The idea is to give people the freedom to retrain, start businesses, or invest in their well-being while automation reshapes entire industries. I take a really cautious approach to UBI because as much as I see the benefit, I also believe it will just further widen the poverty gap. I don't see how we're gonna reconcile that. But honestly, UBI is an episode in itself, so if you want me to explain what's going on there, what it is, and all of the experiments already running with it, let me know in the comments. Now I saw our every job descriptor right now looks like it was written by a committee of five wizards, two economists, and a caffeinated raccoon. Must understand AI, statistics, logic, data, Python, vector embeddings. <laughs> Look, I know we're all just doing our best, and that's why today's video is sponsored by Brilliant, because if the job market is going to keep throwing plot twists at us, we might as well have a brain prepared for it. What Brilliant does is simple. They take topics that normally make people feel it's too complicated to learn, math, logic, data, programming, AI, tech concepts, and turn them into little interactive challenges you can actually play with. You're not sitting through lectures like you're in a dungeon. You tap through a quick exercise, drag a slider, solve a tiny puzzle, and and suddenly the things that used to feel scary make sense. It builds the kind of thinking that help in basically every job and makes you stop crying when you hear the word algorithm. You can start learning for free at the link below and since they're sponsoring this episode, you'll also get 20% off a premium subscription. So let's talk about what's not the answer. Everyone loves to say you need to reskill. Just buy my $7,000 course and you'll be future proof from AI. This is bull Bootcamps promise six-figure AI or tech jobs after 12 weeks, if you can afford $12,000 up front. And a lot of those programs are complete scams. Government vouchers exist, but they barely scratch the surface. And if you're juggling kids' rent bills, good luck. Without financial support, reskilling is more likely to become another profit engine, not a safety net. The inconvenient truth is the more AI automates, the more power and profit concentrates at the very top. High skill roles explode, low wage gig works expand, and the middle class gets hollowed out. But that middle is where career stability used to live. It's what kept society balanced. If we lose it, everything downstream changes from home ownership rates to retirement security to the very definition of a good job. So what actually works? You need tangible strategies. One, audit your moat. Write down every task you do in a week, then sort them into three buckets, automatable, augmentable, and defensively human. Invest where you're safest. Automatable is repetitive rule-based tasks AI can already handle. Think basic reporting, scheduling, summarizing, those will be thrown out. The second augmentable task where AI can help, but you still drive. Think research synthesis, first draft writing, data analysis. And the third, defensively human, things that will always require judgment, trust, empathy, or creativity under ambiguity. Think negotiating strategy, PR, crisis management. Now zoom out. Double down on your defensively human skills. These are your moat. Deepen them, showcase them, make them central to your professional identity. Learn to master your augmentable tasks with AI. If 40% of your work can be sped up with tools, be the person who knows how to do it not the person replaced by it. For automatable tasks, throw them out. Don't fight the tide. Shift your energy to where you can add irreplaceable value instead. Next, learn the tools threatening your field. The goal is simple, become the operator, not the operation. The people thriving right now aren't the ones fighting AI, they're the ones directing it. That means learning to manage the tools threatening your field, not competing against them, and you don't have to be a developer to do that. If AI is creeping into your industry, pick one platform that matters and learn it really deeply. The goal isn't to become an engineer, but it's to become the person who knows how to steer the automation instead of getting steamrolled by it. Three, push for leverage. 
If your employer is adopting AI, advocate for funded retraining as part of the transition. Imagine negotiating contracts where companies can't deploy automation unless they fund employee retraining as part of the deal. This is an easy win. Just think about the metaphor from A Bug's Life where Grasshopper said, if the ants realized they outnumbered us, we wouldn't have power. You have more control than you think. And for watch policy like your paycheck depends on it because it does. Right now, governments are handing out massive tax incentives to companies automating jobs with zero requirement to invest back into the communities they're disrupting. This has to change. Pressure your reps, demand any corporation receiving public incentives for automation also contributes directly to public reskilling programs. Man, that's a lot. I need a break. I need a coffee. So the real question isn't, will AI take my job? It's what part of my job are on borrowed time. AI is impacting jobs across every industry, so you have two choices. Adapt your role so you're steering the tools, or wait until somebody else does. That's the mindset shift that I believe is not optional anymore. But this doesn't mean panic, it means prepare. Learn the tools, understand your mode, build leverage because no one's going to do it for you. Now tell me, what is your strategy now if your role is affected by the next wave of automation? Share your thoughts in the comments below, ask me questions, I'm reading all of them. And if you don't mind, please remember to subscribe to my channel. I'm just an awkward tech nerd and trying to help people because I don't feel enough people are. And for those that waited to the end, my signature dance move. What will it be this time? I'm so awkward. Come here, up, 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 up. Sterling, come on, up, up, up. Come on, yes, yes, yes. Oh, there's my door. Come on, do you want to join me? No, you're not. He's like, no, can I have a high five? No, oh, okay, thank you so much. I love you. I love you. Okay, here's my dance move today. Can I have a high five? No, my dog is so smart. He just chooses not to listen. Knit. High five, Sterling. You're a border collie, you should be smarter than this. High five, high five. Yay, good job!